is the uh, regular first meeting of the year, in fact, Montclair uh, Planning Board. Uh, <coughs> notice of this meeting is posted in the local papers uh, and also in the lobby of this building. We are being streamed live uh, on uh, YouTube and we are being broadcast live on Channel 34. Um, this meeting is a quasi-judicial meeting, meaning we have powers and procedures resembling that of a court of law, uh, and we are obligated to objectively determine facts and draw conclusions from them in order to provide the basis for official action. Uh, any questions or comments that uh, we receive during uh, this evening uh, should be limited to issues that the board can uh, legitimately consider uh, in reaching a decision and decorum appropriate for a courtroom uh, should be maintained at all times. Um, first on our agenda is our roll call. Chair Wynn? Here. Vice Chair Brodock? Here. Mr. Schwartz? Here. Mr. Cook is excused. Councillor Schlager? Here. Ms. Willis? Here. Mr. Rooney? Here. Mr. Ian Wally? Here. Ms. Lachman? Here. Mr. Barr is excused. And Mr. Gilmer? Here. All right, we have our annual reorganization business to deal with. Um, we um, now look to the nominating committee for their report. Uh, before we uh, get into the particular nominations, uh, I have a, an issue because I think we have a um, somewhat of an inherent conflict of interest. Um, our board secretary is both the planner and the board's secretary and, and therefore has to represent the board before the council on occasion with particular uh, issues. Uh, there have been a few times where the count where the board's position or vote has not been presented or omitted in the context of some issues the uh, bike walk uh, grant proposal being the most recent in the past uh, the Glenridge Avenue um, zoning down up zoning uh, issue um, there was an, a situation where the board had voted um, to uh, request the council pass an ordinance that would um, up zone the um, the area including the surrounding streets and then uh, the planner as um, representative of the town or after discussions with others in town appeared before the council and attempted to remove five particular properties from that uh, council passage without any warning or discussion to the town sh to the uh, planning board so I think we have somewhat of an inherent conflict here given the planners position uh, as a dual role how do we um, uh, ensure that the board's voice vote or decision is equitably presented to the council in the context of um, of all business that goes on where where votes or decisions from the planning board come up does anyone have any thoughts how we might uh, require the planner board secretary to present the board's position in that context as well I have a couple suggestions I mean number one the board's position you know Councillor Schlager is always at the council meeting so she can certainly verify the the recommendations to the council the board's the board's recommendations are almost always are always in written form they're provided to the council um, I don't necessarily advocate on behalf of the planning board I present the information I am sometimes asked to present the information on behalf of other committees of the township so yes I I, I agree there are op, op, uh, quite often di conflicting positions that I am presenting to the township but I never not present what the planning board's position is I say that's the planning board's position this is the thus and such committee's position well, well hang on so let, me finish, let me finish Sorry. so Sorry. certainly councillor Schlager as the council representative can advocate for the planning board's and explain it 
any member of the planning board can do that you as the mayor's representative also have a link between the planning board and the council so at this point I think it would be very beneficial if a member the, the liaisons between the planning board and the council could reflect that position uh, right. or or advocate for it more strongly Th those those are some good points and maybe what we have to ensure is that you have to just instruct us what's coming up before the council for instance on the well, Martin Martin can I jump in here for a second um, not to not to um, cast any issues with the validity of the points that you're raising. Um, this is not a situation that we're going to solve right now. This is something that um, hasn't been an issue up until this point, and you're popping it in front of us right now, all right? I would suggest that uh, the most prudent thing to do, because we have business that we need to take care of this evening, and the most prudent thing to do would be to let's study what's going on what some very what the various options are this is what we have committees on the board for uh, and then uh, once everybody has done a little homework and given this issue some thought then we can have a better discussion uh, about what if anything needs to be done all right now um, we have a um, uh, subcommittee that uh, in fact we, we should be getting ready to to appoint uh, reappoint various committee personnel in a bit um, but we do have a personnel subcommittee um, we're talking about uh, the secretary position um, so I would suggest that um, you know this should be a topic for the personnel committee uh, to review um, perhaps uh, you know, it, if the personnel committee members don't feel that it's appropriate for them, then perhaps, you know, we should convene an ad hoc committee to focus specifically on this issue. Um, but again, I don't think we're going to be able to do anything with it this evening. Um, and for the time being, I would like to re refer it to the personnel committee um, for them to consider. And then, you know, with the, with the instruction that if the personnel committee thinks that it's inappropriate, for them to consider or that it would be better served that another committee be formed in order to address it then they should communicate that to me uh, and then we can convene uh, a subsequent committee to deal with it uh, I don't have any problem with that can we at least agree that as an interim step because I think we were almost there that um, as board secretary that our uh, and planner that uh, our board secretary uh, be uh, obligated to inform us when something impacting the board is going to be reviewed by the council because we don't always know what's what's coming up and so nobody would be there or you know no one's prepared for it the the two situations i mentioned that's really what happened there was no knowledge of anything going on so i'm i'm perfectly okay dealing with this you know in in subcommittee and then uh, coming back to it but i think i think we need some interim step at least that that uh, you know there'd be some obligation for for being informed weren't these matters that were on the council agenda and I think I so was I did bring so that if they to if, the if they're on the if they're on the council agenda I mean I think it's it's not fair for you to say that we had no way of knowing I mean this is the same standard that we hold to the public when we put things on our agenda so you know people who are interested and we as board members should be interested and if we're interested enough in a particular topic then you know nothing's being hidden it's it's there is notice published out there when the agendas are posted on the town website but I'm sure we meet and the council agenda might be in another two weeks so I'm just saying it seems to me there there just should be some notice and you know well I mean anytime we act on something she tells us when it's going to be presented to the council I mean I can't remember a time where she hasn't and I, uh, the council agenda is usually not finalized until the Friday before yeah, the meeting, and I quite often don't know what's on the agenda myself. Uh, understood. So I, and I think. Well, I think your suggestion is right, uh, um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think we should move it to uh, to subcommittee and deal with it there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, 
you know, for the time being, until we get this resolved, if there's something that comes up on the agenda that you think is should be of interest to the board, and it's something comes up on Friday or whatever, then if you'll shoot us all an email, absolutely, um, and and we'll deal with that a, a, on an interim basis. But you know, this is the way that we've been functioning for for years and years and decades. Um, I don't know whether I agree with the implication that it's a conflict of interest. I don't think that we do things any differently than other communities do. Um, you know, but again, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it, examine it, and discuss it from a more informed basis. Um, so if we can move along to the um, nominating committee report. Um, we need a okay. nomination. Oh, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's Robin and Martin. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm good with all of this. I move the uh, planning board subcommittees for 2000 for 2020. Actually, we so need a we need a chair nomination for chair, vice chair, planner, and so that we can form. Oh, we have to each one separate. Yeah. You can do them all at one do time it. if you want. But it's just. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's the chair, vice chair, secretary, and assistant paper. secretary. Okay, so I move forward the um, the subcommittee appointments for position of. Chairperson, should I do them all together, all three? I just need a motion. You move. Okay, so I move the, the chair position, chairperson, vice chairperson, secretary, and assistant secretary. We need a per oh, remain the same. And you should. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, here we go. And we only do this once a year, so let's see. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, chairperson being recognizing John Wynn, vice chair um, recognizing Keith. Um, I'm sorry, Pranic, um, <laughs> Secretary Travis Talley, and I'm sorry, I don't know who the assistant secretary is. That would be Graham Petto. Oh, Graham Petto. And I so move. Is second. there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Well, congratulations, okay. Mr. Chair and Vice Chair. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Yes. Now and now we will do the planning, the planning board subcommittees for 2020, right. which we all have a list. I will. Um, I didn't know if anybody wanted to. Ch if anybody, anybody wanted any changes, changes, if anybody was not happy with with their. I, I um, could just vacate the communications subcommittee. The which one? I'm on three, and I'll take. I would take oh, off right. the communications one. You want to take out? You want your name off of the communications? Right. I've, I'm on three committees. Okay. Subcommittees, and I just take the two of the. Uh, Is there somebody who wants to take on the? The vacancy in the communication subcommittee, perhaps, uh, Mr. Schwartz, you seem to be interested uh, in no, that. No, no, no. I'm on two, <laughs> two committees already, and they take. I'm a looking lot. for a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> How often do they meet? I don't not, think not, not very often. Very, very no. infrequently. They might be meeting within the next month or two to address this communication issue. Perhaps maybe a greater discussion about publication in the New York in in the in the, the, the uh, local newspaper, but. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a new member, um, Mr. Cook, Mr. Cook mm -hmm. who <laughs> doesn't seem to be sitting on any committees. Yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah. To, that's what happens when you don't come to a meeting. <laughs> due to now he is. So I think I think he should sit on this committee. <laughs> and yeah. each so committee needs. Congratulations, to have Mr. Cook. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a question. Mm -hmm. Does each committee need to have three people? Because the development review committee only has two. The development review committees. Uh, is established by ordinance. Oh. Oh. It just needs two? Just needs two, because oh. we have two from the planning board and one from the zoning oh, board. Okay, thank you. And then, oh, yes, just uh, if uh, Officer Cook would prefer not to, I'm willing to, but I would prefer that he does <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> on the communication <laughs> subcommittee. Okay. We'll put you as first alternate. <laughs> but the, yes, <laughs> I'm good in that role, or second, actually. Um, the two that I was interested in, one was the revisions committee or the redevelopment subcommittee. Um, if folks like their positions on those, though, I'm not like very passionate you about. Said re those uh, revisions. Okay, years. the revisions committee does meet pretty frequently, mm. um, because there's always changes to plans. Yeah, so, so I do yeah. think that we they do re meet frequently. The redevelopment subcommittee has been very quiet because yeah. um, we haven't been. Addressing new, creating new redevelopment plans. I there is some interest 
about revisiting one of our redevelopment plans, the Mission Elm New Street. So there might be a little work for the redevelopment subcommittee this year. You said you were interested in that? Yeah. Redevelopment? Yeah, yep. that's right. Then I'll step off of that and you can, you can um, take my place. Thank oh. you. Okay. Very good. Okay. Okay. So I, um, I will move the planning board subcommittees for tw uh, two 2020 per Janice Telly's memo dated January 6th with the re revisions of the redevelopment subcommittee, John Wynn replaced by Daniel Gilmer. And on the communications subcommittee, um, Frederick Cook replaces Carol Willis or Daniel Gilmer's um, if, if need be. And, um, and I so move. Is there a second? Second. So. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions. Great. The, the next item I put on the agenda um, was just a thought because we do not have a designated official paper. Mm. And according to um, the Open Public Meetings Act, uh, public bodies such as the planning board have the opportunity to identify an official newspaper. I think informally it's always been the Montclair Times, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I just threw it out there. Yeah, I, I think the Montclair local, even though it's, it's really, it sounds like it's more expensive, but it's not because the circulation is much more. Uh, um, I think more people are reading that, just anecdotally I feel that way. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if you could negotiate the price a little bit. Do you, what's the annual cost that we spend on you? Well, the right? actual cost, I gave them the, what we, our general cost is per advertisement, mm -hmm. which could range between 10 and $20, a, a notice, a, a per legal notice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's, they, they measure theirs differently and they, they use a different size. They, they really don't do legal notices. As far as I've seen the monk, I haven't seen, ever seen a legal notice right. in the monk or local. Right. Yeah. But they're willing to do it. They want to do it, yeah. but they haven't, they, they've already gotten, according to them, the price as low as it can go <laughs> based on their circulation. Well, question. Wouldn't it make sense for anything municipal across all the zoning board, planning board, Well, the paper, the township does not have an official paper, an official <coughs> paper. I asked about that. As far mm -hmm. as I, I was told that they have not designated one. The Open Public Meetings Act does give you the opportunity to identify your own if you so choose. So that's why I'm, I'm doing this, just to see how you feel about noticing for your meetings and your decisions. Is it so expensive that it can't be in both of the local newspapers, the Montclair Times and the... Oh, we can't afford to do both. Mm -hmm. That's why, what is it, that yeah. expensive? How? Yeah. Is there a sense of the scale of this decision, though? Just like broadly, how much we've spent previously? Well, I, I know we, we, we've had room in our budget because we've cut. You know, we've changed the way we do our our notices so that mm -hmm. we do all our own certifications to reduce the cost. So if it if it's if it if I think the increased cost can be accommodated in our budget. I guess the question is, what do we pay annually on average? You know, we're both it, if there's question. no big um, yeah. uh, development, going development, on. it's not even development. There's no big initiative like a master plan or a redevelopment mm -hmm. notification requirement. It's usually less than a thousand dollars a year. Because okay. it's the meetings are the notices times twenty about the notices for the meetings and well, the notices we do an, one meeting at the beginning of the year. Applicants right. do their own pay for their own notices. Right. The only thing we do pay for is the. Um, the notices of decision is what we pay for and the at the beginning of the year the the calendar and if there's a special meeting we notice for special meetings right so it's less than 10 yeah well it depends on how busy the year is yeah then. right yeah it well I make a motion should I make a motion well, I think the biggest impact will be requiring applicants to notice in oh, the official paper okay which yeah, be at the Montclair Times or the Montclair local does the DRC have its own budget no, it does not have its own budget. Um, so it I comes out of comes out of the planning board budget. No, it comes out of the planning department budget. I see my budget. Can I make a motion to uh, use the Montclair local as our advertising notice vehicle? Well, sorry, 
uh, I'm making a motion that we uh, um, use Montclair Local as the um, vehicle for putting official notices from the Planning Board. I'll second that. Okay. Let me just... All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No Abs opposed. Abstentions. Okay. Do we not do the Star Ledger anymore? Can we one time do the that? Star Ledger? We don't know. It's very no. expensive. Very. Okay. We only use that when we absolutely have to. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We have uh, minutes from our December sixteenth meeting. I guess I just had a kind of a, a question as to whether we should be putting. Um, subcommittee reports as part of the minutes so that you can pick up the minutes and then read the subcommittee report and you get a whole picture of what went on during that meeting that would be my recommendation but I don't know what everybody else thinks I don't have a problem with that I think it's reasonable mm -hmm. if it, if that's the yeah I think it's reasonable yeah okay and I had one typo about that. I caught it <laughs> thank you so is there a motion to uh, approve the minutes as amended? Second. second. Who seconded? Carol? Carol. Yeah. Oh, sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Abstain. Okay. All right. That brings us to uh, resumption of the application for 37 Orange While we're getting ready there, there was a trespasser strike near Bay Street. That's what all the police activity was. Yes. What? Trespasser strike by the train at Bay Street. By Somebody got hit by a train. Yeah. 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 Oh wow. wow. That's what it seemed like. Somebody was hit by a train. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, before you begin, I just want to say thank you to everyone. I'm glad you got reappointed. And good to see you again, all right? It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like we haven't seen you forever. <laughs> and I, and for the record, yeah. Mr. Ian Wally's yeah. leaving as well. Okay. Bye bye. Summer, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he just came for the process. Got yeah. Okay. You're awesome. Are you ready, Councilor? We are. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, again, I'm Tom Troutner from Chiesa, Shaheni, and Nujia Tomasi here on behalf of the applicant, uh, HP 37 Orange Road, Montclair, LLC, uh, for continuation of our application for preliminary and final major site plan approval. Um, we are pleased this evening uh, to um, approach uh, two topics. Uh, one, uh, what I think is conclusion of some engineering testimony uh, to respond to some questions that have previously been raised. We have Kevin Webb from Lang and Engineering. Uh, additionally, we uh, would like to present uh, our traffic and parking testimony this evening uh, through Mr. Carl Pankey, also from Lang and Engineering. And um, there was a report submitted uh, in advance of uh, this evening's uh, proceeding regarding traffic uh, and parking. And I plan to get into that. Uh, but before we get to that, first I'll ask uh, Mr. Webb uh, to come back up and um, uh, speak to a couple comments on the engineering front. Um, I just have a question, Mr. Troutner. Um, you don't anticipate finishing your testimony then tonight? Uh, no, we, we'll, we'll have to return on Congrats. architecture. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> And Mr. Webb, I, b I believe you've uh, already been sworn in under oath, but uh, so uh, if, uh, you've been previously sworn. Yeah, right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Thank so you. State your full name for the record for your last name. Kevin Webb, W E B B, uh, professional engineer with Lang. Right, Thank away, you, Mr. Webb. Thank you. So we made um, two important, but from a plan perspective, relatively minor changes uh, intentionally. We had one unintentional change, which I'll get out of the way first. Um, your engineer correctly identified that we had uh, undone a change that we had made last time relative to the pipe material on a roof leader. Uh, it, under the prior engineer, Mr. Watkinson had recommended a perforated pipe. We had 
uh, change that at the direction of your engineer to a solid wall pipe and the CAD gremlins uh, bit us in the backside and uh, undid one of those changes. So we'll make sure to correct that and uh, bring that uh, change uh, back to a solid wall pipe. So my apologies in that regard. That's just along the orange road right here that bump out is for the proposed uh, drop off area. Mm -hmm. So it's just really a connection that has no benefit to Thank you. Um, the first change is really in addition. Uh, when I had testified previously, there had been some questions about um, whether or not um, the pedestrian environment, uh, particularly in front of the proposed retail space, would in fact meet the uh, sidewalk cafe ordinance standards, um, which we had not affirmatively addressed. We talked about in my testimony said, you know, uh, if in the event or anticipating that a uh, sidewalk cafe permit would be sought, we'd ensure that we have a compliant plan. Uh, what we've done here is try to, to show that uh, more specifically and to ensure uh, that there was uh, uh, no gray area in that regard. So specifically, and pardon me, Uh, what was shown on the plan is a little bit harder to see here. We've identified in a DAS space here. It was a, identified in a, in a similar fashion on the plans themselves. Um, was a proposed area identified to be a sidewalk cafe area. It's 15 feet um, uh, long by 10 and a half feet uh, deep. Um, it's just over 150 square feet. And with that, um, again, it's a little harder to see here. There's two pedestrian potential pinch points. There's a tree grate, obviously, underneath this tree. So there's an area between the curb and that tree grate to the uh, northwest corner of that sidewalk cafe area, uh, which is over seven feet. And in the other adjacent uh, potential pinch point for pedestrians would be on that southwest corner uh, adjacent to a raised planter. Uh, that has over nine feet of clearance uh, pursuant to the sidewalk cafe ordinance. There needs to be at least a six foot uh, wide passageway in that regard. And I think uh, this exhibit demonstrates that we are able to comply with that going forward. So I have a couple of questions just about pedestrian um, a space. So where the cutout is on Central Verde, how wide is that sidewalk? Um, in this area? No, no, on the Central Verde street. Oh, here. That where the cutout is. What is the sidewalk width there? Um, let me measure. And and just to confirm, that would be. Th is there a door? I think there is a door on Central Verde, but that would not be the door that people would use when they're exiting the building to get to the garage. Correct? They probably would go out the front and then walk all the way around that direction. Correct. There okay. is an actually an exit door in. Yes here yes. from the stair tower from, but this is that's not meant to be a uh, traditional access into the building they would go out beyond this these are all service doors yes either to um, maintenance rooms uh, uh, there's a refuse room there there is a side entrance to the uh, retail space uh, which was ostensibly used also for loading mm -hmm. that would come from this side um, and again there's access to uh, meter room in a fire department room. but presumably that door would be locked it's correct yeah so what is the size of the sidewalk checking that yeah five feet that's five feet mm -hmm. okay thank you just for a, a point of clarification while we have a pause um, the door to the refuse room is also going to double for loading uh, people moving no or well we had some we had discussions about that it can yes <coughs> it it has the opportunity uh, here this room would also serve and it's got double doors here it also has a door internal to the garage so you could move items through that room through the garage without them being carted out center verde and into the front of the lobby you can have access to the lobby through doors here there's an internal connection and then essentially through the garage entrance to the lobby All right. but please, please just refresh my memory 
is it anticipated that any moving van would use the Centro Verde uh, cutout? Correct. Okay. Right. And they use that door and go in through the garage. And yeah. Correct. Not what we talked about going through the driveway and into the garage and putting itself right by the elevators there. That's Correct. not happening. That's not happening. That is not happening. Okay. Uh, the other change we made um, was specific to that loading area um, in the position of it. We have moved it. Uh, um, um, Mr. Thomas, the fire official, had um, identified that. It's a little hard to see here. The fire department connection that's proposed is right here. Um, previously, uh, the loading zone was 31 feet uh, to the west or to the, le uh, to the left on this exhibit. So there was potential if, in fact, the vehicle was there, it could, in fact, um, block the fire department's access to the fire department connection. We have moved that west or to the right to ensure that there's uh, unobstructed access in this regard, even if a vehicle is, is here. Um, also, there was one other comment uh, that was identified mis by Mr. Thomas, uh, was about the position of uh, needing a fire hydrant within 100 feet of that fire department connection. We have, in fact, added a fire, fire hydrant uh, at this corner. Um, and it's, uh, I want to say, within, you know, approximately 50 to 55 feet from that fire department connection. So I believe we can comply uh, or we do comply uh, with that standard. Um, the only other resulting change is really just basic cosmetic by the virtue of uh, moving this loading space uh, slightly to the east. We've reconfigured some of the improvements on the streetscape. Uh, it's relatively transparent. Um, in terms of just uh, swapping fixtures and locations and things like that. But uh, there is a minor change in that regard as well. Uh, Mr. Webb, another question. On Centro Verde, the um, area to the right or right above the tree, the mm -hmm. gray, what is that? Uh, sidewalk instead of pavers. It's just a different oh, pavement tree. Oh, okay. Okay. And why did you do that? Why didn't you just keep the It's pavers? really a continuation more of... Um, sort of the pattern that's left from uh, Valley and Bloom in here and then it transitions into the streetscape of, uh, as we've had it, uh, you know, carrying forth the, the frontage and uh, the side of the retail. So is the entrance to the garage, it's, it's off the picture here, right? Entrance to the garage, right, is, is here. Oh, it is there, okay. Yeah. Entrance and exit. Currently, yeah. correct. Currently? Yes. Is there going to be another exit? Well, my understanding, there will be the opportunity to have an uh, egress lanes out onto Orange Road. Uh, From Orange Road, right onto Orange Road. Onto Orange Road. I didn't see that in the planner. Did it's I not in our plan. It's not in your plan? I think it's a part of the build out of the, the out deck. The in the I, th it's I, I think it, I, I'm, I'm speaking out of terms. Obviously, it's not part of this application, but I, I think that has something to do with the lift and slide coming online. But Janice may have more information on the. Or under it's still showing exit. Yeah. To Orange Road. Yeah. There will be an exit. Okay. Correct. So it's not currently operational today. But so conceivably, all the traffic from the garage could be going onto Orange Road if you had a, the garage filled to capacity. I, honestly, don't I don't really know, know enough about the operation of the deck mm. and the configuration of the deck to answer that. That's interesting because your part of your application includes has a lot of impact with the deck, but you're not aware of how Said it's. Said I am not. I mean, not. We have okay. others uh, who may. Mr. Mr. Panky will will testify this evening. Obviously, can. Mr. Webb, did you have a chance to speak with Mr. Thomas about the fire lane and whether it would or would not include the loading area on Centro Verde Drive? I know he specified that um, it should be inclusive of that. We're not opposed to that in any way. We'll certainly agree to whatever markings um, he requires, you know, along to denote that fire lane. Uh, I know in just the observation of what happens on the eastern portion off of our site with the fire lane, there's actually different treatments on different sides of the road. Um, so it wasn't entirely clear to me what the chosen option was. There is, uh, as part of Valley and Bloom, there is a pull off over here and one over here that are marked differently. Um, so it wasn't entirely clear which one was the preferred. Uh, but we're open to however he suggests it be striped. So if he suggests that that loading area is part of a fire zone, doesn't that limit the a moving van or something um, similar vehicle from occupying that space? Well, I think it is, um, it's, 
that's why what I viewed as the the treatment on one side seemed to um, allow that and on the other side it was unclear that it would but again I think it's really an um, it has to be from uh, the intention of how it is signed and if there is uh, a fire lane with the exception that uh, this loading space is used accordingly um, as it's been designed in this case it could be deemed consistent with that um, I, I think it's really up to his interpretation uh, my took I took his comment as not prohibiting the use of the loading space as we're presenting it it was more of uh, trying to outline what the limitations and prohibitions would be on the rest of it and how those two would interact but again I'm that was my interpretation of his his uh, request it seems like a key issue to nail down I mean I understand that you're flexible but it would seem as if mr. Thomas would say no you can't park a loading vehicle in that spot that kind of has a major impact on this application that but he we didn't say that when he talked about what he did want for the fire lane so that's why I took it he, he didn't suggest that if that a the, the loading space was uh, well let me not permitted on, on Centro Verde I, I, I recognize that I'm just reading his letter which says the area along Centro Verde Drive I am requiring that the fire lane continue from Valley Road to Orange Road both on the north and south side of the street which will include the cutout on the south side of this building so when I read that to me he's saying the fire lane is inclusive of that cutout and that's the way it is striped for the cutout that's on the uh, north side of Centro Verde on the adjacent property um, clearly that cutout is used in fact the uh, one of the Google Street images shows in fact a person parked in that spot uh, you know albeit beyond the fire lane um, you know there's a fire lane that that stripes that comes right along this space um, so again it's uh, my interpretation based off of his failure to suggest that there's an exclusion of any lo similar loading spaces on Centro Verde that it's a matter of how we stripe it is that something we can ask mr. Thomas to clarify Miss yeah. Tally it just seems like a very or or issue a letter I mean I yeah I think he needs to clarify his report yeah th and so just to clarify I'm speaking I'm on reading from issue. his um, it's an email from mr. Thomas to Ms. Talley dated November 4th of 2019 of course he's put something in writing that's a little ambiguous mm -hmm. so we need it we need it clarified in writing that's fine that's all the changes that we we had Any questions? Any further questions? Any questions from the public concerning the testimony this evening? Mr. Webb, there's a handheld mic right uh, next to the laptop. my press oh his okay I'm okay all right um, my name is Nicole Millett I represent the five homes that don't have driveways but my question for right now is where are the refuse where where is that going to be kept at and how often is it going to be picked up um, Sure, the refuse, there's actually a room inside the building. Where? Would that be? Here. So that would, that's in the side street. So this is Orange Road right here, right? Correct. And then that's on that side. That side is facing South. the, um, this is the, the parking garage. Correct. The okay. parking garage is right here. Yes, sir. This building here. Okay, the next question is how often will it be picked up? And where will it, where is it going to be picked up from? Is it going to be picked up in front of Orange Road or on that side street? Uh, presuming we get to keep our loading space here as we're proposing, it would be picked up from that location right here. And how often? Uh, 
Uh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, that's that that uh, really is. It makes a big difference to us because um, in the garage they're like cat rats in there now, and we, you know, it could be due to the empty building, a lot of the development going on, but also how often is the garbage being picked up for these new developments? And again, it's inside the building. Uh, yes, but it, which it garbage. also spills to the outside if you start having rodent problems, which we are starting to have. I, I don't think there's any intention to store any of the refuse that's collected from inside the building, outside the building. No, 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 no. that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking when you put it, how often is it going to be picked up and where is it going to be set outside of? For instance, on Bloomfield Avenue, all those stores sit their garbage outside on Bloomfield Avenue. Mr. Trouton. It, it, it's picked it, up and loaded immediately. So the, the Mr. The Webb. I'm sorry. Mr. Trotner, is there another witness who might be more appropriate to answer this I'm question? I'm sorry, I'll put you on the spot. As to, as to the frequency and what the, what the um, garbage removal schedule is? I, I'm, not sure, I, I'm not sure that we actually have another witness here this evening that could answer that question. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, 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 I was going to let Mr. Webb answer. I believe the garbage is kept inside until it's taken outside where it's loaded onto the truck. Right, the, but uh, her, her question the, is... The question of the frequency is, right. is, is, obviously, it's what's customary and for, the, for, the, for, the, for the operation of a building of this type, but that's, I, I suspect that's not going to be a sufficient answer. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, is, it, is it going to be private or is it going to be public? There you go. Municipal. Yes. I think my expectation would be a, a private hauler. Yeah. Private. All right. Uh, for the buildings, then um, the other buildings that the applicant may be involved with, how often is the garbage picked up in those buildings? Uh, Mr. Stolar has uh, previously been sworn uh, to the extent he may be able to answer questions on operations of other buildings. I'd ask to speak. Yeah. Uh, Brian Stolar, S T O L A R. <coughs> I don't know the exact schedule for each building, uh, but all the residential buildings in Montclair, any ones that we've done or others, all have frequency of uh, pickup multiple times a week. I don't know. Two days, three days. It, it's clearly at least two or three days. Uh, I think bigger buildings are different than smaller buildings, all about you know, what the capacity is of the refuse and the, um, right. the trash compactors. But I do know that it's done on a regular basis and right. uh, to be no different here. And I think you can also take some comfort in the fact that there's both retail and residential use in the building and I doubt very seriously whether the residents would tolerate cat sized rats in the Honestly. in the building. <laughs> <laughs> so they're outside um, right now and it, it's I know it sounds really wild but right, but I mean the applicant can't control what's outside of the building um, you know, unless it's contributing to it. When and so the testimony has been that the garbage is going to be stored inside, uh, and if it's private, then uh, it, there's the opportunity for it then to be taken from inside the building directly into the truck, mm -hmm. or it could be stacked out on the sidewalk in the morning and it could be collected that way. Um, and again, if it's causing a vermin problem, I, th I think that the building management would need to take care of it, and if not, it would become a health department issue. Right for the town yeah. right so. I hear I hear everything that you said and I really truly understand it I truly understand it but I do think that this is our time as homeowners to express what our concerns are due to the fact of what we have right. experienced no, I and when you have a restaurant that's going to be inside a building then that requires a lot more pickup due to the fact that no. there's a restaurant No, we, we, we do and understand that. We're and seeing that. I don't mean to interrupt you, but this is all along Bloomfield Avenue that the grates where they're, the trees come out of, you know, they put these fancy grates. Mm -hmm. There are huge rats living under those. Yeah. And there, uh, there are, I mean, you literally, they walk as though they're not afraid of us. And, and this is where restaurants are, where their garbage is sat outside 
and it's only picked up twice a week on Bloomfield Avenue, which is right next to the gas station and a few doors down because the first mm -hmm. home she had, she still has, and is experiencing a rodent problem. So I know that this may seem extreme to you guys, but for us who lives there, what we see, and this is not to be critical of anything, you know, but this is to say, please, we need this address and we need it kept in mind as we proceed with the um, development. Because I feel when you're, you developed one place, you look at that place and you see what could we have done differently so when you build your next place you don't make the same mistakes again. So that's what my concern is also, mm -hmm. why I'm asking these questions. No, we understand. Can I ask you a question? Just, I, I was curious, I drove around the site today and there's um, permit parking in front of the houses, is that correct? <laughs> Who is that parking for? Oh, they literally put that sign <laughs> to be so mean to us. Oh. The opposite side of the street, there's no signs at right. all, which is the side of the hotel. Right. Only in front of our home is there limited parking. You can park all day, anytime you want, but at night you need yeah. a permit. Right. And it was personally put there because of our homes, which is so, I mean, so offensive so that they're not you got for a hotel you, they're on not one for you side, guys? there's no parking regulations. Yeah. None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You can park overnight without a permit, but mm -hmm. in front of the homes that don't have a driveway, you literally put a sign that permit parking only. So you can park on, oh, yes. well, this is, the, we're, we're getting off, we're getting off track off here, but you can, right. you can park on Orange Road overnight without a permit. You can't park anywhere yeah. in yeah. the township overnight without a permit unless there has been an exception expressly made for that particular street. And maybe the, maybe they put the sign there as a reminder to the homeowners that you're not supposed to park unless there is a permit, but that applies all over town. Well, the opposite side of the street, there's no sign. It doesn't matter. It's by ordinance. I, I, I understand that, but it doesn't work that have, way. Have, have, is it, I that, think it's is it that the homeowners have been parking their cars there overnight no, regularly? We don't, no, we don't park there. We don't park over by the hotel. The only place, we park wherever we can actually find a spot. But not in front of the houses where they put the sign. Where actually we live, I, I've never, I'm not able to park in front of my house. I'm carrying five bags of groceries a block away, two blocks away to get to my home. And it doesn't matter how heavy my bags are. are do you observe cars parked in front of in front All of your the house? Time. Yes, absolutely. Overnight? And I watch them unpack their luggage. Overnight? And, yes. And, and that's probably why the sign is put there to remind people that you can't people are parking there and maybe it's to remind people guests at the hotel I don't know well, it's I guess my question the is the first snowstorm yeah. a police car came and he spoke on his loudspeaker and stood directly towards in front of our house and said remove your cars else they will be towed and, and did I'm any like okay we got it you know did homeowners. any homeowners come out and remove their cars or we, were they people from cars, the hotel our cars no it was for us it was directly at us, mm -hmm. as though we are like, we have become so offensive with our small homes there, okay? I mean, they never enforced it in the manner that they did at the first snowstorm, okay? And they did tow a car, it wasn't one of our cars, but we did move our car. We are obedient to whatever the rules are. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not there to break it, we're there to keep peace well, on our street because Well, don't feel bad. Live. The last the last snowstorm, my neighbor across the street parked his car in the cul-de-sac and he got a ticket. Yeah, and it wasn't even a through street and it was a nice quiet <laughs> cul-de-sac and he was a little bit upset about that so i mean it's it's well, no, i don't I know about the enforcement jags and i don't want to i don't want to take up too much more time yeah. with the with yeah. the issue but my, my point is you know there's these houses that are staring at this garage where the town has 78 or is it but so that's not it, but that's not something that we can address here because the garage is not part of this application that garage that you're talking about is next door. It's not part of this application. This application deals with this property. And the parking that's on this property is just for the use of this property. So that's all we can really consider here. I, I, I'm not saying that your, your okay. issue is not valid, yeah. but it's not appropriate to tie this yeah. hearing up with that. Okay. Right. I just feel for the 
I, I mean, I do well, too. This there is should as, be, as there a should be some, there should be some, there should be some uh, avenue to address it. But your homes are not the only homes in this town that don't have driveways and p where the residents uh, of the property cannot park the car on the property that they're either renting or own. And you know, so it's this problem is not unique to your five houses. There are well, lots of other ways that it's dealt with, and, mm -hmm. it, and it seems like there, there should be some alternatives. It is, it is when you approved up a hotel being built directly across the street from our five homes but the, that but don't the have, one second, you have a hotel, a huge hotel built across the street from our five homes, which is the only hotel yes. in Montclair. Right. Second, you turned from a 16-unit building into a 46-unit building. But what building. does this have to do about the parking in front of your house? Our quality of living, sir. You may not be able to relate to <laughs> it, but our quality of life, okay, for once, I have back issues, I have knee replacement due, a second one due. So I'm saying to myself, how am I going to manage? There's no handicapped parking, which there should be, and we should have been accommodated due to the overdevelopment of Orange Road. You should be talking to the council, and you should be talking it's, to it's your council horrible. person about that, because that's where those decisions get made. They don't get made here. You're on your right next to Bloomfield Avenue, which is a major county thoroughfare, which is a commercial, thriving, very busy area. And because you're so close to that, that is going to impact your quality of life. Well, we, we haven't had those issues until we've had all this development being built on a small street such as ours. You got two schools, you have a hotel, you have a 47 unit being, 46 unit being built, and you have a garage. So it has changed significantly. But it doesn't, it so doesn't it's not affect the, the parking. average street in Montclair. It doesn't affect the parking though, which is what we were talking about, the parking on the street. That's my point. I understand your concerns, but trying to draw connections from one to another is, it, you know, it's 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 straining it a little bit mm -hmm. you have legitimate concerns you should be addressing those concerns with your council person and with the council you know to maybe get some ordinances changed or to get some consideration you know well, just like because mm -hmm. that's what that's what people who live in similar situations on other streets in the town have done okay so you am know, i at the wrong meeting or something or well no you're, Yes. <laughs> For to deal with those issues, to deal with those issues. So the parking yes. issues is not. This is not about that. Not the parking on the street. No, to the extent that the applicant's plan impacts the street parking. Yes. Consider that. We're being told that they park everything on. And we haven't had, and we haven't finished the testimony on that right. street parking, yeah. and we weren't talk. We weren't talking about that. At this well, point. Well, no, I just answered her question, but my concern was also where, how often is the refuge right. going to be picked up? Where is it going to be kept? Because we are starting to see a rodent problem. Not to blame it on anyone because there's a lot of development going on, but I just want to know we have restaurants. There's going to be a restaurant there also. So, yes, I do have a right as a homeowner who lives on that block to ask that question. No, I'm not. And, and I certainly and don't and mean and any right. offense. And nobody, nobody's saying that you don't. But, but that was different from this whole discussion that we well, got off on. Well, it kind of got off of it. But so. Yeah, sorry. I asked you the question, and you helped me uh, understand. Yes. So this is, and this is, why we, this is why we should stick with the testimony that, that, that we've had offered. And because this was actually supposed to be questions of this witness about what he testified about. And so we got a little bit of sidetrack. When they have the testimony uh, about parking uh, come up, then you yes, will hear sir. some other things and uh, that may or may not uh, give you a better picture and you'll have the opportunity to ask questions then also. Right. But, but, I to, still to, but to address your issue. About the refuse? Right. Well, about the refuse. Yeah. We her. can confirm one other thing. I'm sorry. On the yeah. Refuse. Those restaurants on Bloomfield Avenue do not have refuse rooms. They're in older buildings. Right. Place to put their garbage. We can agree and it's going to be a condition that whatever is in that retail, no matter what the operation is, mm -hmm. their refuse must be inside, locked in the refuse room until it gets picked right. up. Until it gets picked It'll up. never be outside. Ever. Right. The only time it's going to be there is when it gets picked up. So that should go, and that was my original point, the fact that it was inside should go a long way to addressing this particular site 
exacerbating the problem with the rodents. But you've got five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten other restaurants in close proximity right, that, and, a, exactly. and a food That's store. Why, so it's not and not pointing and, you it know, at that. your, you know, you have also an empty building that's been there, which right. can also attract right. rodents. So, so yes. but if you're seeing if you're seeing cat-sized rodents yeah, underneath absolutely. those grates, please call the health department and please call the town because Honestly. I yeah, yeah because that they sh you know they if there's a pro they can come and get it they should be able to do something about oh it God. you know I have I I have raccoons in, in my backyard and when they get if they get into the trash can I call the town come get it do right. something about it because I'm not touching it you know mm -hmm. so I just was asking that so that it didn't exaggerate it with more building and people forgetting that okay how often is the right. garbage picked up where is it kept you know are we keeping this under control right because I can tell you some streets it's not in places where I wouldn't eat due to what I've seen. Understood. So. Uh, before you leave the, uh, the topic of the parking issue, I read somewhere in this great mass of information that there was some idea of considering whether or not there could be uh, overnight parking for the, the, the houses that are across the street from. But that was in that was with respect to something else. It wasn't with respect to the engineers. No, it's not with respect to this. And I'm just saying, but we were talking about it. Mm -hmm. I'm so saying that there was something in the works at some point of, of considering whether or not th th those those spaces could be assigned for overnight parking yeah, for those five houses. Yeah. So let's it may be worth looking oh. at with the council person um, and following through on it. Let's put a let's put a pin in it. Remember this. There you go. That's exactly. And see if we come back to it. <laughs> yeah. yes. All right. Certainly the board can make a recommendation in its evaluation of the overall plan uh, as to the impact on the local community because uh, you know w with all consideration from the homeowners they can't tell what the what a redevelopment plan on paper is going to do to them you know five years out down the line so I, I think that's a very reasonable position to take and you know I think the board as the parking plays out here a little bit, we should consider that and maybe consider making a recommendation to the governing body on it. That, thank you. That's exactly right. Thank you. Sorry, that, No, that's no problem. Do we have any questions of this witness, any other questions of this witness from the public? All right, Mr. Troutner, next witness. Thank Sorry, you. Next witness, uh, uh, Carl Penke from Langen Engineering. Then Langdon has been writing about parking. We'll see what I see there is. That's for you. We'll do that as soon as we're
to color rendering of the revised site plan prepared by Lang and with today's date. Thank you. It, it is so, so yeah we'll seek to have him sworn in and qualified as an expert and uh yes i do certainly for the record my name is carl with a k penke p is in peter e h n k e and you'll be testifying as an engineer tonight? uh yes mr chairman he's been here previously would you like more about his credentials or no we'll accept him Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Mr. Penke, you're familiar with the application that's the subject of the uh, proceeding this evening, and uh, you've uh, you've had an opportunity to visit the site. Yes, I have. And uh, you've um, uh, fully reviewed the submissions to the board uh, in terms of the site plan and related uh, uh, materials. Yes. Uh, and uh, in the course of uh, your review of that information, uh, did you prepare a uh, report or reports, I guess plural, uh, regarding the subject of traffic and engineering related to the proposed project? I did. Uh, those documents uh, are dated October 22nd of 2019. That's a revised letter. And then the most recent correspondence is dated January 2nd of 2020. Now, uh, Mr. Penke, could you uh, give the board the benefit of your um, uh, analysis in terms of uh, the subject of traffic and parking? Certainly. So my involvement with this project uh, uh, is basically uh, addressing uh, the traffic uh, evaluation that was submitted uh, in my prior report last year, which was revised October 22nd, 2019, and then also to evaluate and uh, discuss the parking aspects of the, the project. Uh, in general, uh, the project, I think Mr. Webb has given a, a very good uh, discussion in the last couple of meetings that he testified to in, in laying out the building. So there's just a few things I'd like to talk about from a traffic standpoint. Uh, the project is the redevelopment of a property that's currently occupied uh, by Farrar's Auto Body and uh, Gas Station. It uh, was a uh, operating entity, commercial entity in uh, the municipality. Access to Ferraris uh, is currently provided via two curb cuts along Orange Road northbound. The first curb cut is toward the northern portion of the property and it's approximately 30 feet wide. There's then an intervening space, which you can see on the exhibit that's up right now. I think this is 50, uh, uh, exhibit 53, where you see three uh, vehicles parked right now. To the south side of that, there's an existing additional driveway, approximately 40 feet in width, and that's the current uh, access and frontage along uh, Ferrar's frontage. There is existing uh, standard sidewalk in relatively poor shape along the frontage of Ferrar's uh, that extends uh, along Orange Road and provides existing pedestrian uh, connectivity. Uh, from a uh, traffic standpoint, the project is improving uh, the access and frontage along Orange Road. The two curb cuts are obviously uh, being eliminated. The project will be accessed by a single 24-foot wide driveway located toward the northern portion of the property, basically where the existing uh, northern driveway is, uh, except a little narrower for the gas station. To the north of us is the uh, driveway and parking area for the plumbing building, and then further no north of that would be the in inbound uh, movement to the uh, Port Cachere for the MC uh, Hotel. Uh, the access uh, for the underbuilding uh, parking uh, is provided along the northern section of the building and then it flows down into the lower level uh, of the building, which uh, Mr. Webb has previously testified to, uh, where a total of uh, uh, 38 spaces are provided in a mix of 30 standard parking spaces, two handicapped parking spaces, and then a shared uh, zip car uh, parking allowance. And that's under the building. Uh, access to that building would could be controlled by some sort of key fob uh, that is provided to the users of those parking spaces uh, that would have access to that. So it's not a general open area parking where visitors or anybody can come into. It would be residents uh, of the building. Along the frontage, uh, as Mr. Webb has testified to, there are substantial improvements to the pedestrian environment. Uh, the sidewalk area is being widened. Uh, along the frontage at its narrowest point 
Uh, we have 19 feet from the back of the uh, in, in, uh, uh, drop-off area curb to the front of the building and from the planting islands uh, about 14 feet. At all times, we're maintaining more than an ADA accessible uh, five-foot uh, uh, walking path across the frontage. So the pedestrian environment along the frontage will be uh, significantly improved. Uh, in the design of this project, uh, we elected to incorporate a, a bump out along the frontage for drop off uh, and pickup activities. We know that the world is evolving and that it is becoming more and more frequent that ride share is a portion of life these days, particularly in environments such as Montclair, uh, where there's uh, urban activity, access to transit and so forth. So rather than uh, having that activity occur along the northbound uh, curb line of Orange Road, which currently uh, is restricted in parking, we elected to provide a design that's appropriate for uh, today's residential uses where we have the bump out for the short-term uh, activities associated with drop-off and pickup uh, so we don't disrupt flow along Orange Road. Uh, overall, I think the access and circulation along the frontage of Orange Road will be improved uh, with regard to comparison of the existing condition, certainly getting the driveway further away from Central Ferde Drive uh, towards the northern end uh, all enhances uh, the, uh, the movements uh, along this section of Orange Road. Well, with regard to uh, the traffic uh, generated by the site, uh, it is relatively modest. We are proposing 46 residential units and a, uh, about 2,300 square foot of supporting retail space for the downtown area. Uh, the prior use on the site was the auto body shop, 11, uh, approximately 11,000 square feet uh, with the four uh, gas pumps. In terms of actual traffic generation comparisons between the prior peak hour use by the gas station to the proposed use, it, it's very similar in terms of the overall uh, level of traffic that would be uh, generated on the roadway system. And just as an order of magnitude, we're, we're looking at approximately uh, uh, 16 or t about 20 entering vehicles in the morning, 29 exiting vehicles in the morning, uh, about 29 exiting vehicles in the evening, and 25 entering vehicles in the evening, a, a relatively modest uh, traffic flow. Some of those vehicles uh, will be oriented obviously directly to the access to the uh, underbuilding parking for those that are assigned those spaces. The remaining residences that are using the, uh, the Orange Road deck. Uh, and or visitors to the retail would use the access to the deck uh, in and out off of Central Verde Drive. And my understanding when the deck is completed this spring with the lift and slide operation, there is maintained an exit onto Orange Road, which was the subject of the prior approvals and, and the design of that deck. We are not altering any of the circulation uh, of the deck, nor is that part of our, our application. Uh, so, from a traffic standpoint, I think the project is, is relatively uh, straightforward. I think it's a good story. I think cleaning up the frontage and completing the linkages in here with the pedestrian improvements that have, have occurred uh, all will enhance uh, this section of Orange Road. Uh, with regard to the earlier discussions uh, on parking and, and the parking restrictions and so forth that exist on Orange Road, we are not proposing any other changes uh, to those existing restrictions. Uh, we really don't have a position on uh, what alterations the town might consider uh, for the residences along Orange Road. Uh, we think that creating the bump out along Orange Road provides for appropriate pull off so that we don't disrupt traffic flow on Orange Road, uh, but we don't really need anything else to change on Orange Road. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Just with respect to that. I, it, are you sure that's accurate? Right now, um, there's three parking spots. People are using them, as you heard from the previous right. the previous uh, a commentator. There are people that are using spaces that, by the signage that existed out there uh, prior to the construction of the hotel, restricted parking along the northbound side of Orange. Signage is if, if you actually watch the signage as you come up from uh, as you come up from uh, Hillside Avenue, uh, you'll see coming on up. Uh, you'll see a little bit of permitted parking in front of the Board of Education, about two spaces. And then right after that, there is signage that says no parking with the up barrel, which is pointing toward Bloomfield. As you continue up Orange Avenue in front of the deck, you'll see the next sign, which is no parking with the arrow both ways, which means th that restriction is continuing. 
And what probably happened is when they built the MC Hotel, the last sign, which would have been a sign that would have said no parking with the down arrow, disappeared. Mm -hmm. And there was probably a sign that said no parking from here to corner, which probably also disappeared. But the north side had, uh, has that parking restriction along it. And, and as you heard from the prior. Uh, uh, and you, you verified that with the. Uh, yeah, your ordinance is. Because we had someone, a, a member of the public, that came and said that there were no parking restrictions. Mr. Rubecki. The signs are there. So and I, I, I'm and just saying. Yep. And then when I went to visit the site, there were three cars parked where, you know, the you're proposing a park Correct. Out. And that's an enforcement issue. So in a issue. sense, you're, okay, well, I don't know that, but um, in a sense, you're losing three spots. No, because they're not permitted you're today. They're not pretty, but they're Th there, physically, right? yes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah. And and as I said, it's the the town, you know, the reason for the the uh, orange road is 36 feet wide. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, I'm not sure the origin of those restrictions on the northbound side. Certainly, there's really, except for in proximity to the deck egress and Centro Verde Drive egress. There's really no reason why parking couldn't be put back, but that's a, a council decision. Mm. Uh, from my standpoint, it's something that could be considered, maybe a recommendation of this board. Mm. Uh, but there must have been a reason at some point in time that that was restricted. Uh, but we're not asking to change that, nor do we uh, need to uh, change that, that condition. The only, the only other thing I would note. Hold, hold on, Mr. Peggy. Well, uh, my understanding, Mr. Peck, you your ordinances do reflect the restrictions. In fact, the chairman was discussing some of what shows up in your your ordinances. So it's, it's by ordinance, it's just a matter of the signs coming down the middle of that. This should go back up. Or yeah, I'm just saying that I think Mr. Rebecca said that he looked at the ordinance and there are, is parking all up and down there. I'm just repeating what I heard him say and wondering if that's something we really should check that's out. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. I'm with you. I yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That and the signage is in the field. So Please. I mean, that's we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for sure. The the only other thing I would like to talk about is there is has been a request in the review memorandums, and Mr. Webb did address it about striping for the bus stop for the 97 bus across the street, which basically falls uh, in this area. Uh, we are agreeable uh, to doing that. The only thing I would note is uh, we're going to need some direction from the town engineer and your consultants as to what type of striping they would like because the restrictions that are currently there are in accordance with MUTCD. There is a sign just south of the one hour parking that begins the beginning of the restriction and that's in accordance with MUTCD. It says no parking from here with the down arrow and then the bus sign with the arrow pointing back saying no parking bus stop. That is the MUTCD required signage for that type of a unit. There is no striping for that type of a uh, employment in MUTCD. And I did look in New Jersey Transit to see if they had a striping detail, and they don't. We're happy to put some paint on the ground, but we're going to need some direction as to what uh, what that would look like. But uh, we agreed to, to, to do that once we get some direction from your uh, your consultants on what they would like to see on the ground. So that really is is the access uh, and circulation. I think Mr. Webb has gone through a lot of the site where the doors are and, and egress and so forth. So the next real part of this is, is, is parking. Uh, and I still have some questions about traffic flow. Sure. That's what you're talking about. Okay, so I'm looking at exhibit TM102. TM102 is what? It's um, the vehicle movement plan. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So could you put it up? I don't. Kevin, do you have it? We don't have it on the board. You don't have that. No. Do we have that? Okay. So then, um, so coming out of the garage. Can I point on this? Yeah, Can you this connect That one seems to have fallen apart. I mean, I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> well, use this for now. I was using it for now. Just get another pen. You're the communication committee. <laughs> yeah. So, could you put that up? Here 
Facebook pa yung dalawa ko guys. I can use this one. I want to use this one because it's... have a question I'm going to ask him on those spaces the car share because they've never reported on it should be Ferrara resubmission There's no date in here. There should be a time. Okay, so it's a little hard to see, but um, out of the garage, cars coming out of right. the garage and into the garage, they can make left-hand turns or right-hand turns. Left in and left no, out. No, no, no. I'm sorry. The residence garage. Oh, the residence garage? Yeah. You can make a left in or a right in or a left out or a right out. So there's no restrictions on left-hand turns? No, no nor is there need to. And, and there's no restrictions on Central Verde making a left-hand turn? No, correct. Coming out of Central Verde, there's no restrictions right. today for lefts or rights. And there's a bus stop that's right across the street as well? Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Coming at this just as a resident of Montclair. So this, you may have covered this already. So, well, are there any requirements for in egress with regard to the proximity to a uh, traffic light. So if traffic backs up to Bloomfield, does that have any impact on whether people can turn in or out or whether you would stripe the road differently or is that just completely out of scope? No, so, you know, there are state standards that the state uses on a state highway. Right. Uh, and their standards are generally 50 feet from an unsignalized intersection mm -hmm. and 100 feet from a signalized intersection. Uh, we are well in it uh, mm -hmm. further than that uh, that standard, and that's for a state highway. Uh, in in general, you know, you don't want to be right up on the corner. You want to try to be to the back of you know where queues are and so forth. But 50 feet plus is, is usually a general standard for a local road to a, to a uh, a signal or a stop sign. Yeah, and I don't want to make it any harder to navigate getting in and out of there. I'm just wondering. I've been on that road, and I've had it backed up all the way to Bloomfield. So I'm this is a highly personalized question here so I was just wondering if that would impact the way that you've designed this but you said you're no. far enough from Bloomfield that there would be no like standard guidance yeah to that, that would that would in suggest that this driveway shouldn't be closed no and and yes I, I would agree in a in a uh, suburban urbanized area such as this uh, during various peaks of the day there are probably multiple intersections throughout the town that experience various levels of queuing uh, but you don't design for that one period or short periods of, or of time when you have those things because this is a 24 hour a day operation. Right. You generally want people to be able to go to and come from uh, where they want to go to from a natural standpoint because once you start to try to force uh, uh, patterns, two things happen. Uh, one is people ignore it and then you have, you yeah. have <laughs> an enforcement problem. And, and two is you could actually compound problems at other locations because you're forcing patterns. You're forcing people to use Valley when they can come directly here. And 
So you can you can create a domino effect from that standpoint. But from a traffic standpoint, my observations out here, the level of traffic we're talking about during the peak hours, I don't expect any operational problems with the driveway for, for uh, the MC residences. Yeah, and there's a fairly limited number of spaces under the building, That's that which is a separate <laughs> issue altogether, That's but correct. at least it, it addresses this one point. That's correct. And just one more point. So, sure. um, you know, when I think about this, I'm thinking about the site, the application site, and the traffic around there. So there's also a driveway, a two-car driveway in that little plumber shop next door. Correct. And they can go left, right, whatever. Correct. And then just a little bit further up, there's, there's the, the entrance and the entr entrance and the ent uh, egress from the hotel. Correct. So so right to the north of us, you do have this small little plaza where. Right. Uh, it's is not that small. Plumber. It's a two-car. It's a two-car. Yeah. Very low volume. Uh, right. In, in between, the, and then you have the ingress right. to the port to share. And then it loops around, and the egress is probably about 100, 150 feet further uh, north uh, from there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a series of driveways along a local road. Uh, again, the site visibilities are, 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 are good. Uh, we're really not changing anything. That curb cut exists today. We're making it smaller, and we're eliminating It's a chance one. for us to improve things. I know you keep and, parking and we back. And yeah. I think we are improving yeah. things by, mm -hmm. by uh, cleaning up this whole frontage. Uh, both from a pedestrian environment standpoint as well as a, a wide open curb cut standpoint. Thank you. So when I look at that, I see, you know, cars coming out here, cars coming out there, cars coming out here, cars coming, it's just a lot of traffic merging onto that street from your site and the plumber's site, I don't know how active that is, and the hotel. That is so the function of a local road, such as Orange Road. It has to, sometime, at some point in time, you have to get to a parking space. And, and to get the parking spaces, you have to have driveways, and, and that is the function. I, as, as I said, I think what we're doing is cleaning it up. We're, we're getting a 40-foot wide driveway away from Central Verde, which is probably the most active out of all the driveways along uh, these frontages. Uh, we're creating good sight lines there. We're moving, we're, we're uh, moving our activity as far away from that driveway as possible. All of that are is good traffic planning, good traffic engineering. Uh, improvements along along this corridor. It's, I think it's going to end up making that uh, a, a different environment, a more comfortable environment, uh, and a safe environment. And then what happens at the hotel when you have a major event like the grand opening um, where you have cars that queue all in front of the Ferraris until the valet can get to them and they're going to have to leave room for the driveway to get into the residential So, so what happens in that type of a situation they just is, wait. is the mm -hmm. hotel has to do what they have to do. They manage the, sit the queue. They make sure that they're not blocking uh, other people's driveways. That is a function of the hotel. It's not part of this application. It's going to occur no matter what if it's occurring and that's a matter of having the right personnel staffing and managing it and making sure that, uh, that that the adjacent users are not inconvenienced. And Mr. Panky, just to clarify, there, currently there's two driveways out there and we're reducing to one, is that? That's an correct. Act? Yeah, okay. I mean, the point though is you could say if you are entrance to your under, well, your surface level parking in the residential building, we're on Centro Verde, you'd eliminate some of that problem. But just stay in. So you d did you do, do a traffic survey at different periods of time? Is that what this grid is in your report? That's a different, that's regarding parking. The park, I mean, I'm sorry, yes. yes. It, and we'll it, talk about that in a minute. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, the, the issue with access to the underbuilding garage from Central Verde, yes, the issue with the, uh, and Mr. Webb, I think, touched on it, if I recall in his testimony, is grade standpoint. You can't get down. It is, I'm so sorry. The, the, the difference in elevation between Central Verde Drive and the grades of the property don't allow for that type of connectivity from Central Verde. So that was one of the things that went into the design thinking on how to make this work. We had a better opportunity to come in with the proper ramping, a very short ramp system to get to the lower level, which you don't have off of Central Verde Drive. So that's one of the, the, the driving design factors, uh, among other things. So we'd have to give up maybe three spaces to address the grading issue to I'm, I'm not sure that that it would be just that simple because because this is the the shorter direction and uh, this is the bigger area this creates the opportunity to ramp down in a, in a logical manner if you tried to ramp down in the middle of this it, right. it really just doesn't work but we don't know one way or the other how many spaces it would take now we haven't done that exercise it was a challenge that just made it made more sense to have the access as designed yeah. So, 
Uh, I do have one. I have one more question on pedestrian circulation. Sure. I, if, if I recall correctly, in a previous meeting, we talked about perhaps doing a different treatment across the driveway to enhance that pedestrian connection across the driveway and designing it more for pedestrians rather than for vehicles. Did you have a chance to consider that? Yeah. So uh, again, that's that's a detail that we'd be happy to take on as a condition of approval. So right now, what we're showing is a different pavement, uh, identifying and highlighting visually the driveway itself uh, you have the brickwork along the frontage and then you have handicap ramps dropping down across the driveway we can carry the brickwork across the pedestrian path that's one option or we can go to what did you or or we could go to a different type of uh, pavement treatment at the apron in order just to carry that visual pedestrian I think uh, NV5 had a suggestion along that nature so if there's a particular treatment of that we can certainly just carry that across uh yeah. that, that pedestrian Mr. Area. The, the board should should understand that the the brick treatment that you see um if it was continued across at the crosswalk would actually be a break from the brick to the concrete of the ramp then back to a brick it would it would have tend to be confusing in that nature um perhaps Putting a, a, a brake line, saw cut line, or just a seam in, in the forms of the concrete, matching along the um, the press curb and then the backside of of that that crosswalk, and perhaps stamping that concrete to create visually like create the texture of the crosswalk in in the open uh, concrete area. Yeah, because I think one of the comments from NV5 was was to also give the pedestrian visualization that he was on a different he was in a little bit of a different environment so right. yeah i think we can work out that treatment through that crosswalk area with some sort of exactly yeah, I think what you're suggesting of, of just scoring and mm -hmm. and changing co concrete like with concrete perhaps even coloring that you section color that section with a similar light color to the brickwork and right. just to give that let, let the pedestrian know he's in a different location, but also carry the path across the frontage. We certainly can do that, yes. Thank you. So, uh, parking. Uh, I, I need to ask a question of our planner. Uh, Janice, um, the redevelopment plan is section 4.7 for parking and loading. Can you describe or are you clear about what edits have been made to this newest version of the plan compared to what was presented in the past has yes the redevelopment plan So from a parking standpoint, uh, your redevelopment plan was established to deal with uh, multiple uses uh, in the, the, this basic redevelopment block. Uh, it was set up to handle uh, and consider the parking needs for the Center Verde 1, 258 apartments, the 25,000 square foot or so office. Uh, the retail of some 27,000 
uh, and then ultimately the the, ho the MC Hotel with its rooms, uh, its function space, the restaurants, and then also talks about the rehabilitation area on the Ferrara Auto Body Shop, and and it defers back to RSIS on that, and that's all in your your redevelopment plan. The more important part at this point in time in the redevelopment plan. Uh, uh, from a practical standpoint as well as uh, a functional and success story standpoint uh, is uh, that your redevelopment plan also recognized uh, that all of these uses had synergy. Uh, all of these uses would be silly to park individually and create uh, tons of parking for an office building that only parked from 9 to 5 for retail that parked on Saturdays midday for residential that had its demands uh, at night uh, and that those synergies created the opportunity for this board to consider shared parking uh, and, the, and the efficient development of uh, a deck which in this case is the Orange Road deck and your prior your prior planning and your prior applications preceding this for Central Verde 1 Valley and Bloom for the uh, for the for the MC Hotel uh, spent a lot of time doing those calculations and sizing uh, the deck and the deck ultimately uh, is approved to be developed uh, this coming spring when completed to provide 614 uh, parking spaces that's with the lift and slide and that that'll be the day-to-day -day operation capacity uh, of, of, of the deck uh, and that was all planned and, con and, and based upon that whole idea of shared parking and, and what it does. And as engineers, uh, as planners, uh, we do the best we can in terms of trying to make our projections for shared parking. Uh, in this case, I think uh, the, the prior work was successful. Uh, it overestimated the needs. And quite frankly, in sum, before I get into the details of it, uh, this deck has ample uh, parking in, on, in it to accommodate the needs of the users that are already built as well as the needs of the MC residences. Now, I'll tell you why uh, I say that and I think one of the advantages that has occurred uh, with the length of time this application has been before this board and the number of nights we've been there is that we've actually been able to get to a point where we still needed to be theoretical because the MC hotel was a bunch of cement getting poured to the point where the MC Hotel is now a successful operating entity. And the hotel has come online starting back in the summer, re received all its COs by sometime in the end of September, had a grand opening with a huge function of 500 people back on October 17th, and since that time has been operating as a business entity in the town, establishing itself uh, and moving forward, having events, uh, you know, having people come to the restaurant, uh, having people staying at the at the hotel, uh, and prior to that, prior to last summer, you had Valley and Bloom and and the retail and the office all had come online and actually has been online uh, for uh, quite frankly over a year and a half to two years now and has established itself uh, on the roadways and all of that is important because the parking deck is a managed deck. It's managed by a professional organization, Pro Park. Uh, you're all familiar with Mr. Sokic. Uh, and it is a controlled deck, so the deck is monitored. Uh, and uh, Pro Park has been monitoring the capacities on, of the deck uh, through, its, uh, through its gate systems, the TIBA uh, gate systems, which is able to identify on an hourly basis the number of vehicles uh, parked in that deck. So we've had the opportunity now to not only look at last year's data, which we were looking at as we started the plan for this project, but to look at this year, uh, a full year of data starting at the beginning of this year, uh, all the way uh, from my request through uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, and what that allowed us to do is to see what was occurring throughout the year and to see what's happening now that the hotel has been online in a peak season when people are coming to visit relatives in the area where people go out to dinner at Christmas time and after Thanksgiving and use amenities such as uh, the hotel uh, and, and see what's really happening and then look at what it means in terms of this deck. Yeah. Into that detail, I wonder if you could just back up a bit sure. and clarify 
the various users and exactly how many spaces are supposed to be there because mm -hmm. I have, as I look through the data there seems to be so many different figures each report has a different number so I would just like to back up a bit for example I know that the hotel is counted as 148 isn't there are there 159 rooms now at the hotel isn't that is that is that the correct number 148 or what is the number I'd have to def defer to uh, Mr. Stoller on the exact number. I think it's in the 150s. I think there was a one, couple 115, more. 159 is my understanding. No, it's now 159 because they, they, the math has been done on 148. You know, when it looks at how I many spaces are supposed to be there, it's done on 148. Yeah, that's not my math. That's okay, the, well, that I mean, that in terms of counting how many spaces are due, sure. so that's, that's one of the... Uh, yeah, so, so the data I'm presenting tonight is based upon all of the hotel rooms that are there, the 159 that have now created a track record through December and November. Okay, but the reason there. why I'm asking that question is because I would like to see a total of who the people are who are using the deck and how many spaces are at this point the correct number of spaces that mm -hmm. is required for each of mm -hmm. those uses. So if you could just well, back up and give us those figures so that we mm -hmm. have the correct and accurate uh, account on what's supposed right. to be there. So I, I don't have those figures because the, the redevelopment mm -hmm. plan also permitted this board to consider shared parking and when right, the I'm prior not, application shared parking. And it's all the, shared parking right so when the prior applications were, were put together the calculations on the shared parking and the ebbs and flows on the hours created the uh, information that this board considered in approving of those applications right where we are now is that we have actual data we now know what shared parking is really means in that deck right and uh, that's no, the no, more but 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 I don't mean don't, to interrupt please don't. Go. 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 the question is though we need to go back and look at correct numbers for example if there's 159 rooms in the hotel there's a different count required than if there are 148 if there are 78 spaces set aside for the, by the town, um, this, that's a different number than if there are 48. So we need to know for each of these various users exactly how many spaces are required. And I'd just like to see the correct number for each one of those. Well, the, the required spaces are per your, your, your read about the redevelopment ordinance where, where without shared parking, it's the one for one for apartment. No, 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 no. That's, that's not what I'm talking yes. about. We I'm talking. We, right. we can't figure out what. No, the, the, the thing well, is, is that this, the deck is shared park, and we all understand correct. that. And so I'm not discussing whether or not it should or should not be shared parking. But when we talk about shared parking, we talk about numbers based on right. how many hotel rooms there are, right. how many apartments there are, how many uh, spaces are set aside for various users. And I'd like to see clarity on that before we get into talking about how it's functioning. Let me read the appropriate section on this. Well, a determination of minimum parking requirements shall be based on the aggregate total of parking requirements for individual users. And then it says, if acceptable, the planning board may, it doesn't say it must, it may relax the aggregate total of required spaces to account for the shared use of provided spaces. What my colleague is asking for is that we re-identify what the totals are yep. for the various users so that we can then back out and make a logical determination whether the shared parking requested works whether whether what is in the plan is is can and is being accommodated and so now you're now can I can mm -hmm. I just jump in here for a second um, if I'm understanding you correctly you want to jump past all of that and say that was all theoretical what I have now is the actual it's however theory. however we can ignore what we base decisions on in the past because there's s too many entities that have a piece of this parking deck right. pie. Right. So what we want to know, we want to know your information, but what we would like outlined for us in addition is for the hotel, there were X number of spaces that were required. The planning board approved a shared parking plan where these spaces would be accommodated in this fashion with X number devoted to this, X number devoted to that, and these number, these spaces shared this way. Central Verde, same thing. Right. They got 
X piece of this pie. They have X number of spaces that were required for X number of units in this development. And the plan that the planning board approved said that those X number of spaces would be accommodated in this fashion. And so we want to we want to see or we want to understand and we need to understand if there's three entities sharing this parking space you know huh? so for one space in this building how many pe how many entities have a claim on that particular sure. space and is and is that claim only a daytime claim or is it an evening claim sure. and and then once we know what the theoretical numbers were that we based our decisions on we would like to see what the actual usage numbers that you come up with so, so you know actually show excuse, that wait excuse me I'd like to add one more thing to that on on a Saturday night f Friday night Saturday night Sunday night if there's a wedding reception in the hotel or if there's a bar mitzvah what are those numbers of parking yeah so so there's a couple if, of if, if, the, if the catering is at full capacity yeah. on an evening because the, again the problem is is that there's a lot of different entities sharing this and it's become it's really become jumbled and in order for us to consider further sharing the parking we need to know what was promised as opposed to what actually is being used I mean I'm, I'm assuming that your testimony is going to say hey there's plenty of room here because the utilization has not reached X amount all right so we would like to know we would like to put this in perspective and it's like well if we thought that the utilization was going to be Y and you're saying is X you know what we use to come up with Y doesn't ring true for some reason we'd like to know where and why that is so that we can be assured that you know what you're saying is is true for the long term or at least the immediate future the you know regular use of the uh, of the parking garage instead of an aberration that occurred on the five or six or seven days that you were there actually taking numbers so uh, mr. chairman I'm, I was going to ask would it be permissible if we could just take five minutes because obviously we weren't prepared to give a presentation along the lines which you've asked I think I understand in terms of you want to understand the basis of the prior approvals understand the shared parking that's right, applied now and then and then understand where I think we were what which you yeah. accurately predicted where we we're going which is this is what's actually happening because right, these um, numbers are yeah. all these numbers that are in this report are next to useless yeah. to me I don't understand them and I can't I don't know how to tell you to help me how to help me understand it without doing what I just requested so, well that, that <laughs> no objection if we just I just want to talk to him for five minutes and then we'll figure out maybe what we can present this evening what makes sense and obviously we want to give you this information in a format that makes the most sense so sure. yeah. thank you Mr. okay let's we'll do a five minute recess just, if I can just one after and, and when you get to the actual if you can talk about what the occupancy of the hotel was and what you projected to be yeah. you know was during October through December from which you have these counts and, and it's not only not only occupancy but be. if there were any events going on correct that would impact the parking I also have a question is the is Valley and Bloom fully rented yes it is fully rented okay okay five minute recess is this, uh,
Dennis, we're on. Welcome back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the courtesy. So, I, I, as as we said before the break, and as you've accurately predicted, we had focused our presentation, our proposed presentation tonight, really on the actual conditions at the site, rather than some of the historic theoretical elements that had gone into prior approvals related to the Orange Road deck. But we we obviously hear the board and you, Mr. Chairman, in terms of what will make sense to you in terms of uh, un having a complete picture of understanding uh, what, it, what it is you're considering in terms of our application and the deck. Um, so with that being said, I, obviously we were already planning on coming back for another evening. We, we're going to come back and obviously give you that information. Um, and uh, we don't want to belabor, obviously, the presentation that we had for tonight. We'll save a lot of that. But with your permission, we would. there's a couple of highlights we would like to just hit just in terms of your takeaway for um, understanding, you know, where, where we're going to come back, what we're going to present, and how that's hopefully all going to tie together. All right. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, certainly. So, so briefly, I, I've heard the request and comments, and, and we'll, we will work to put uh, information together for you that uh, formulates uh, uh, where you were. Uh, on on this and how you got there so we'll put that together and I'll come back and I'll see if I could step through that in an orderly manner for this board I did want to leave for you to, to consider over the, the next weeks before we come back just some of the key information on on where we are now and, and where we are now really mr. chairman is as you hit on it the most Im important thing uh, and uh, you know the hotel obviously had a grand opening event back on October 17th well attended over 500 people uh, at that point in time when we started to prepare for the board I asked mr. Stoller if we could put off uh, submitting on the parking since the hotel was fully operating we had that grand opening event I wanted to see what happened subsequent to that in November I wanted to see what happened all the way up to New Year's Day uh, and he did that for us and he pulled that data together so the data that's in the report I did on January 2nd is not just five days of data it's every day since October 17th. In fact, we have the entire year on an hour by hour basis. And one of the key pieces of information that I think is very, very relevant and very, very important is that out of all that data, aside from what occurred on October 17th, which had some peaking as we would expect, uh, with the hotel operating, all of the rooms that are built uh, operating, uh, the function space operating, and whatever events have occurred, uh, at the deck, we have not seen more than 329 parking spaces in that deck at any one hour, any one day, in all of the hours that have occurred from the day after October 17th through to the end of the year, or about 54% of the operating capacity of that deck when it is completed. And that's the, key, that's the key information that uh, really goes to where we are and where shared parking really is working. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I was curious about that because uh, there have been times when there's been a sign out saying that. Sure. It, that is. So, let me that so, so hold on, please. Let me ask my question. Um, and you'll have the high point. I'm looking at the chart that you provided, and you have the high point of being 345 spaces being used, and the average, say, from April till. Uh, this year, uh, well, that's the earlier one. Let's go back to the one that's more more recent. Um, well, I've, I've got so many sheets here, but I had this one out because w the lowest one that you say where they're self-parking, you say there are 313 spaces. There are some where they say as many as 500 spaces are there for self-parking. That's why I wanted the clarification. But where you say there are 313 self-parking spaces, and the high the high point of of um, use was 345, and but you the, there's valet parking that's supposed to bring the self that bring it up to 185. I was trying to figure out why were you closing the deck to okay. save spaces right. for people when if you if you brought in your valet parking the deck could have stayed open right so so let me let me address that I did have the opportunity to talk to representatives of Pro Park on that what was occurring in September uh, through the first week of November is that they were doing deck rehabilitation on levels uh, sequentially on the levels within the deck so they were taking levels out or offline so they were reducing the capacity of the deck 
So during that period of construction, they were managing to make sure that they were able to accommodate all of those that had monthly uh, parking uh, obligations in the deck. So this was a, a short-term uh, construction issue associated with the need to shut down levels of the deck as they went in and resurfaced. And that occurred from September uh, through November. Now, while, while I say that, there was also at that time ample parking throughout that deck. But uh, after that November date, everything to the end of the year, uh, is is a, a fully a functional deck. So, so you made the choice to close it rather than to valet park. Not close it. They managed it. I mean, they, you made it to close it to the public. So I, I should clarify the the we and the w w it's not actually it's us. Not us. <laughs> they managed it. The deck operators and owners managed it. So, are you saying that that the the signs on the deck said that it was closed? They well, were they, not they accepting only, any. They were only accepting the people who had monthly cards mm -hmm. and this is supposed to be a shared parking yeah uh, and that was a temporary situation, situation. Well, why didn't they why didn't they valet I, I don't know we don't we're not the owners but see this is deck. this is the problem right. when you're making right. representations about shared parking and you say I clearly remember from another application that we were guaranteed that any problems with respect to capacity would be solved by valet parking and clearly the choice was made somewhere along the line not to do that so if you're saying that that's beyond the applicant's ability to control then how can we rely on a representation that valet parking is going to be used in order to deal with the shared parking situation as necessary we're not representing that as part of this application Pardon? We're not representing that as part of this application. You're not representing so you that shared parking includes? The deck as it's currently planned with the lift and slides and its normal operation has sufficient parking to accommodate the needs of the users that and uh, But what about, if they, what about if they have to close something? Then it doesn't have sufficient parking because we're, we're, we're but, sharing. There are always times when we can't We can't ignore that because you want to take advantage of something that is is is, is existing uh, in the deck okay we can't ignore the other pulls and the other influences on that deck if we're going to say okay yeah you can take advantage of this but you're not responsible for any shortcomings because that's that's not part of 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 what we're representing to you I hear you but I don't I don't think we're I don't see how we that. can do that I don't think we're asking you to I think we're asking you to to uh, are you asking us to accept that that you're going to need spaces or want to use spaces in the deck yes so then you have to be able to guarantee for us that if there is a shortage because we've been told and we're entitled to rely on that if there's a problem with the volume parking in that deck that it won't be a problem because valet parking can be instituted where the cars can be parked you know head to toe and, and double parked and triple parked and increase the capacity of that deck such that it won't cause a problem all right and so we're entitled to rely on that but you're telling me but we're seeing where that's not happening and you're telling well if it doesn't happen that's not our fault that's not our responsibility you know we're not saying that we're relying on that instance of it but but you have to be able anything that you're asking us to do with that deck has to be laid on a foundation that the deck is operating has as it has been promised to operate heretofore and we're relying on the same thing well but, but we are telling you that we can't rely we don't think that we can rely on it so you need to come to us with some evidence that will allow us to either change our mind or to come up with something else because we're we're not we're not comfortable relying on that okay. and clearly the, and the data that we've collected I believe creates that information that this board needs and we're certainly happy to go back and and give you some of the history on it uh, but it is a public deck it is be under construction it is going to be what it is going to be as represented on the prior applications but it and, hasn't and we been would so be sharing far. into it, it but it hasn't been so far because uh, it should have never based on what the, what went on in the prior applications it should have never been closed to the public that only accommodating monthly parking shouldn't have happened a valet should have come in and accommodated whatever public parking was necessary okay. and that didn't happen so you need to you need to make us comfortable with that's not going to happen again uh, quite frankly 
I have, I have a related question I, for clarification because that uh, you are coming back. Uh, section 4.71 says 78 existing public parking spaces much must be preserved within the Orange Road garage for use by the Board of Education and the general public. Can you just for our uh, edification go over what the status of the lease back is because it's come it's gone and how much of that lease back is allocated to general public parking because it's not clear uh, unfortunately that's a uh, you're referring to an agreement that is between uh, Montclair acquisition partners and the township of Montclair uh, we can seek to maybe get some information to try and answer your question but again it's not a it's not a contractual arrangement that we're a party to but see again as the uh, as the board chair said this potentially impacts what you're asking for here because how you know are there 78 spots uh, used by the board of ed during the day and then they become uh, usable for the general public at night are there 78 spots being shared at night so that the public can just drive in off the street we're we're completely unclear about the the uh totals the aggregate aggregate totals of what of who is doing what to whom and when <laughs> and then the Something other like thing that. is is that you're counting them as only 48 right. spots now because of the lease back but the lease is not a sale um the board those 78 spaces the building is permanent so that it seems to me that you can't discount that there are 78 spaces that are that are obligated because you can't just say that because at the present time there's the board is leasing back spaces that that's always going to be the case so when you say there are 48 spaces it's not really 48 it's still 78 that are that are committed somewhere We'll, we'll obviously address all of this. All right. Anything else you want to tell us? No. Okay. I have a Are you affiliated with the owners of the deck? When you say affiliated, I don't know. Are you, is there any relationship between? Uh, no, there's, there's no, no relationship. There's no whatsoever. contractual or legal relationship. Okay. Great. Thank you. Well, now I'm very confused because Mr. Stolar testified about the. Um, physical build of the deck and we relied on some of his testimony in particular um, that we would never see any slip and slides system from the uh, from the uh, street I remember this clearly so I, excuse me I just it's fine I, I actually you took the lift and slide lift and slide so that's that testimony <laughs> that's right I, I've done that twice <laughs> I've done that twice <laughs> I, I actually did not make that testimony it was made by uh, Mr. Driscoll from Elcor I remember when that was done uh, but the point is the information you're looking for we can provide but as to your point that that comment or whatever you're referring to um, I was not part of that modification that occurred later I might without going back into uh, you know detailed uh, records of that particular hearing I, I thought I remembered you making that assertion no. okay uh, just before you guys depart uh, mr. Dannemiller uh, mr. Giosa do you have anything you want to bring up before they go back and re retool a presentation any questions you'd like to raise So I've been previously sworn. My name is Michael Dana Miller. In this case? Hmm. I mean, uh, raise your right hand. Gladly. I do. Michael Dana Miller. D A D A N N E M I L L E R. I'm principal engineer at NV5. Before we started talking about parking, Mr. Penke's first chapter was all about traffic okay mr joseph covers parking i cover traffic for montclair um there was one question about uh, a couple things about pedestrian access they all appeared to be covered um one thing i would in implore the 
board to consider is Orange Road, 36 feet wide. If you cut that in half, that's 18 feet on each side, right? And as we heard in testimony, there was two driveways to the, the, auto, the auto shop, 30 foot and 40 foot. 70 feet of driveway, now there's 24 feet of driveway. There's no parking, or excuse me, there is parking restriction today on the books. There is or isn't uh, actual signs in the field, but there's a parking restriction uh, on the books, on paper. Um, you can fit on street parking. The fact that they did a cutout from where you would be able to put a car adjacent to the curb, they cut in even further so you could put cars where the sidewalk would be. Um, if that's what they choose to do with the, the lot, we don't, we don't redesign. You've reinforced that several times during testimony. We don't redesign for someone. But that seemed like that extra to me. If uh, you, I think that's something that could be clarified or might be a restriction or a request to town council about um, what's going on with parking along the northbound curb. You could have cars on the street, and cars on the street will c help to keep travel speeds low along the roadway. If all the parking is cleared out, you got a clear shot and people will travel a little faster. Both sides of the street or only one side? There'd be room for both. Both would be tight. There would be 10 foot travel lanes and seven and a half or eight foot parking. 10 and eight, it would be um, a lot of friction, which would keep travel speeds low. Excuse me, does it matter that there's a school there? This hillside school that, that is exactly why I'm bringing this up mm -hmm. I would like to s uh, in general for traffic flow I'd rather see slower travel speeds and it becomes a political decision about uh, do we uh, uh, maximize throughput or um, access and mobility do we want cars to go fast or do we want cars to go slow um, even their business the retail space rather people drive by it slowly and they'll be more apt to stop but uh, that's something that could be considered. So um, I'm on sorry. Street parking. Just, uh, just so I'm clear, you're advocating for not doing the cutout, just having the on street it's parking. It's extra. You that's could have, what you my could point have was. Even more right. sidewalk dining. So space. you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a wider streetscape. Yeah. It's nicer to walk um, around. Yeah. And regarding the pedestrian environment, mm -hmm. um, American Disability Act uh, uh, training that I've gone through through Federal Highway generally says pavers pavers they're pretty but for the pedestrian access through way which is minimum five feet which they've clearly got they've got plenty of space they're doing all these pavers I hope they have a concrete sub base so they're not going to heave and, yes. and juggle um, when I did my first training on ADA compatibility mm -hmm. put a whole bunch of us in wheelchairs mm -hmm. and rolled us out in front of a hotel and it was a hundred yards of pavers and we yeah, shook and, and shook and shook for the through pedestrian travel way um, as I think was referred to uh, colorized and scored concrete um, can be a, a very nice and quite frankly more economical <laughs> way and it's and better uh, for high heels too yeah. not to have um, those mm, yeah, but, but <laughs> it'll be a <laughs> lower maintenance issue um, the pavers will probably <laughs> look great and be lovely for sidewalk dining areas in the buffer but the through pedestrian access route um, might uh, be uh, a better accommodation with concrete. Concrete doesn't have to look like garbage, or, or it doesn't have to look incredibly frugal, but uh, it can hold up well, real well. So those are things to, to consider. I just have a question for you. What do you think about having both left and right turns out of all those uh, street, Central Verde Street and the driveways? Not a problem? I, th I think that would be encouraged. Okay. I, I don't mm -hmm. see a, a downside to it. Um, there's room. I don't see any issue with that. Okay. Anything else, Janice? Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Giosa. Mr. Giosa. Yeah. And I don't know. Um, does he have to be? Yeah, if he hasn't been previously, uh, raise your right hand. Uh, do you swear or affirm that testimony you've had to give this matters the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your full name for the record, spell your last name. Gerard Giosa, G I O S A. You may proceed. Yeah. So, my, my question is, um, and I'm not sure if you had spoken with the applicant's um, uh, parking guy, but 
you suggest that um, that they may need to employ off-site parking solutions. Where do you think that's going to be? The off-site parking solutions. Um, the the existing the existence of the banquet space, uh, mm -hmm. in my past experience, can uh, can create uh, these super really? peak really? conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in my estimation, that is not a design value. In other words, you don't you don't design a church for Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. This would be a similar situation than that. So it was it was simply a cautionary statement. Well, I would take exception you with you for a hotel is like this one is designed seems to be for having banquets as often as they can or conferences or whatever. So it's not the once a year situation. Yeah, yeah. So, some are larger than others. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. generally the 80, 85th percentile <laughs> is your design value. Mm -hmm. So. If it's occur occurring less than 15% of the time, then you know it should be within the correct design value. So I, w I was simply uh, um, pointing it out as a, as, a, as a cautionary condition. I understand that, but did you have any discussion about where this off-site parking solution, what that would be? We did not, no. So, so the overflow would go into the streets, the residential areas where people would try to park? Uh, what... what uh, what a manager of one of these operations uh, uh, would typically do is they would make accommodations for the banquet employees or the event special uh, mm -hmm. you know, employees that are going to be coming on site for that event to park off site. And um, it's just something that typically occurs in, yeah. in, uh, in event uh, venues. Mm -hmm. And um, that's simply why. Yeah, my point is, though, there isn't a site mm -hmm. like that in Montclair. We have such a dearth of parking that that's a problem. So, all right, thank you. Uh, okay. I have a question because we have been using the opening of the hotel as a peak event culmination now. The hotel wasn't fully booked that night, was it? On the night that the, uh, the opening occurred, what was the occupancy of the hotel at that time the opening party yes uh, was not fully booked I don't have the numbers but it was pretty have much fully booked uh, was it all throughout December was it 10 percent oh, no. unfilled 20 30 I told you I don't know but it was it's certainly not in low percentage okay like so that. we really can't use that particular evening as a kind of grand um, culmination of total usage because there could there could be a night where there's a incredible event like that and it was a great event um, but the hotel would be filled as well the event like that will never happen again because the only way that the hotel could have that event is basically shut down all of the public places so there was no dining there was no use of the rooftop there was no use of the event space by anybody else we would never let anybody put 500 people in this hotel for their own event it'll never happen as far as the total use with full occupancy at, at a typical expectation of percentage of occupancy <coughs> and events going on at the same time, we don't think it would ever exceed that total of uh, people who were there. So that's really what's our point. So let's say you had a big conference, a wedding at the same time, nighttime use of the um, Top floor. What 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 kind of max would you envision? Well, first of all, we can't have a conference and a wedding at the same time. No, no, I'm saying the same, the same day. Same day. Is it a big conference? Co wedding? Conference sure day, saying. wedding at night. Let's say. I'm 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 just throwing it out there. I'm trying to get a feel for what because this has now been used as the you know pinnacle of of uh, car usage. I'm trying to get a feel for what might occur beyond that or even close to that. Oh, what we gave you was December when the hotel was fully open. We gave you this one night, which was a super event. I forget if that's the exact words that, uh, that Jerry used. Um, and as far as what else it could be, I don't really think it could really be anything more than that. What's the, the capacity of, of the What's the capacity of the restaurant space and the capacity of the event space? That's going to give you your maximum number because you can't you can't put more than that. I thought it was 380. The fire in the information that we had is there somewhere. Well, but well there's see, people and then there's cars. So but yeah, the we'll maximum get you that capacity. as part of what you yeah. asked for. Uh, so if you 
you know, there's a lot of double counting. First of all, people stay at the hotel for a lot of events, so there's not a second car. Um, we're experiencing more than 50 percent, or like 60 plus percent, people coming in uh, share cars <coughs> or car sharing. Um, people don't want to drink and drive. Um, people who come as business guests are often taking a share car from the airport as opposed to renting a car, paying for the rental car, paying for the valet, moving the car, driving it back and forth, waiting for it. So uh, we're going by what we're seeing as a trend that's going on. Uh, anything else for Mr. Joseph? You have anything else that you want to add for us this evening? Don't feel obligated, uh, I, you know, uh, but if you do. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I'll wait, wait to hear what their response is. To okay. The, uh, All right. To Thank you. I found your table, too, very, very helpful and interesting. You seem to say that there was perhaps, I don't know if you want to speak on that at all, but. Well, since you've brought it up table two is um, is a little analysis that I did um, I, I did take all of the previous approved uses that for the cars that are supposed to be parking in this day I did my own shared parking analysis which was projecting what my estimation is what the peak values would be in the deck uh, and then I, 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 I developed this table um, where I've I've, I've determined that there's probably going to be a peak weekday condition of demand in the Orange Road deck, including the new proposed overflow from the MC residences of 563. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I I am aware that that the numbers that that the applicant has presented are lower than that, mm -hmm. but this is a this is a mature demand number that. You know where that we projected using tried and true methodologies, uh, and we've and we've determined that um, that the deck, as 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 they proposed in their various operating scenarios, would have capable capacity to accommodate that demand. Self park? No, not in self park. In a heightened um, level of operation where they were utilizing valet parking and lift and slide. Um, so that's what that <coughs> table is intended to. So you're saying that to accommodate the max demand as you envision it, using your numbers, they would have to provide valet parking and have to provide the lift and slide. Correct. And even doing that on a really peak day that they'd have to find someplace else to park. Traditional parking somewhere else. Uh, I, I, that that is a, uh, a a super peak condition that that can occur. Right. That's. I would find I found that very helpful. Thank you. Okay. I would also note that you're um, using 48 spaces rather than 78. That we, I mean, I personally think we should be using 78 since that's what the town has, though they've leased back 30 to somebody else. And, and how, how much of that, since they're not prepared to answer that, how much of that calculation do you envision allocated towards off-street drive-in parking? How, how many spaces would be available for the Gen John Q public to just, you know, drive in there with no sign saying deck full? Uh, well, it's, it's a... It's a flexible number, yeah. um, but I would I would say that uh, it would range uh, between, you know, d depending on I if they had the maximum operation, if they had the maximum valet plus lift lift and slide, which in my estimate comes to about 720 spaces altogether. Um, if that were the case, in 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 most cases, there would be a hundred. To 200 available spaces for public parking. So, and if no valet, uh, I don't have the number at my fingertips, but I would say that it would it would drop into the double digits. Or 
perhaps 50 to 100. But I think the most important piece here is that full valet, lift and slide, you get to 720, and I think they were noting 760. So. Yeah, and and the reason for that discrepancy is is the 48 spaces, which I believe in their estimates, uh, they estimated if the entire deck were were set up in a valet stacked situation, they could get 760. But my assertion is that those 48 spaces can be set aside for the exclusive use of the township, mm -hmm. so they shouldn't include that area that, to be valeted. So they shouldn't get the bonus of that of that area. So that's the discrepancy of the 40 spaces. And sorry to mix this. So if the 48 is 78, can you say what 70, 720 goes down to? I know it's tough on the spot. It's just yes, that we haven't seven. resolved that point, sure. so it's difficult to know what your 720 number would be. And that's, you know, largely on us. But yeah, I, I'll, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Okay, and because we just need that number the next time the applicant comes back to testify, just so we have a very clear waterfall of full capacity, full demand, all the way down. Okay. Thank you. I'll get you that number. Um, and, and, and just finally, when the, when the plan says 78 existing public parking spaces must be preserved within the deck for use by the Board of Education and the general public, for use by, does that mean the Board of Ed is parking there for free and then when they are no longer using the spots at night, the general public has access and is then getting charged or, or you know what is the relationship between the um, <coughs> what is the relationship with the 78 spots because uh, it used to be a hundred public parking spots there on a you know single flat deck well what what this is now carried over in various incantations we we kept the ground lease and let somebody else build a, a storage parking deck then we sold the deck now we're leasing the spots now we're leasing back the spots it's, it's no wonder no one can follow this mm -hmm. uh, so what what is the relationship <coughs> now what's the contractual relationship well my understanding and I'm not an attorney but from my review of the parking license agreement that dictates the use of those spaces it's my understanding that there were 78 spaces in that deck that the township has exclusive rights to for the sum of and and the township paid for those rights sum of one dollar so so the township has the rights to those spaces through that transaction 30 of those spaces and it's spelled out in the parking license agreement were leased back to the to the owner of the parking deck for their use and it's my understanding that the owner of the parking deck is paying the township for the use of those 30 spaces that's, that's correct? correct yep so as long as the owner continues to pay the township for the use of those 30 spaces those those 30 spaces are for the exclusive use of a party other than the township that leaves the township with the exclusive rights to those 48 spaces so what happens to those spaces at night well now now we get into an operational thing Okay, right now the deck is operated with gates and card keys, right. and a transient user has to pull a ticket at the gate to get in. So, um, so there's no way that, the, so, so, the, so the 48 spaces are blended operationally into the entire parking supply of the deck. There's not a dedicated area that says these are the township's 48 spaces. Although the township does have the right to uh, to allow that to happen if that were the case the township that when the board of ed folks pull out of those spots those spots could be dedicated for public use but the way that operationally the deck is set up with the parking gates set up to get you into the deck that is that is not occurring right now so the those 
those spots <laughs> used to be free for public use at night was my understanding before the deck was before the building was built now and and the plan says for use by the general public so now now is there revenue going to the town from using those spots or the 70 or the either the 78 the 48 what what what's the deal the township does have revenue rights to the shared use of those spaces but there's no mechanism to calculate what those revenue rights are unless the 48 spots were separate and dedicated and you had a separate revenue control system for those exclusive spaces so was this calculated in the in the parking arrangement as drafted now for how the town would gain revenue back from the 78 spots at, at at a nighttime use for the public because couldn't the shouldn't shouldn't and couldn't the township be uh, allowing those 78 spots to be used by John Q public coming in and and collecting rev the revenue from that the township does have the rights to that revenue from what I can understand in the parking license agreement right but there is no mechanism uh, explained as to how that number is calculated or determined is there some informal arrangement being worked out that it's been brought to the attention of the parking superintendent uh, as well as the township attorney that they need to address this so so this agreement was drafted a long time ago but 13. what 2013, 2013, yeah, 2013 but we uh, we haven't been collecting any revenue from that. Is that the is that the takeaway from that? Well, no. I think we've been collecting revenue because we charge a board of education for the for their permits. We haven't been collecting revenue on the night use of those of those uh, well, spaces. That's, a, that's the board of ed internally for the Montclair taxpayers paying themselves revenue it back. It's the it, yeah. yeah that that that's still taxpayer monies. So I'm talking about people driving off the street coming into the deck using one of the 78 spots that seem to be allocated towards still seem to be available for the use well, I don't think the I don't think the 78 is available I think it's down to 48 okay. since the seven you know the the 30 are, are being paid for the we're already getting paid for the 30 yeah. but ha hasn't, hasn't the township then since the redevelopment plan required the spots to be used for the um, for the either the board of ed or the general public in hasn't the hasn't the township given back spots seemingly in contradiction to the underlying intent of the redevelopment plan now not only are we losing money but we're now not providing spots for the public which is what the deck was originally sold for that that's why i'm bringing this up because this deck was conceptually sold a long time ago to provide public parking we've now given back 30 spots to the developer of which we're not collecting even revenue on so something seems although, I, although we are collecting we're revenue on those yeah, we're 30 getting spaces. revenue from them but yeah, on the 30 on the, on the 30, 30 yes. we're getting revenue Understood. on the 30 but so but, but you're out you're correct we did sell it and I don't know how that decision was made but the decision was made to enter into that agreement I think you know personally now we're, it's an issue that may be very concerning but I wonder about the the planning board's role we, we can't act as a as a you know we have a limited we have a limited responsibility somebody should address that the parking authority should address that the the uh, township attorney should address that they should figure that out if they've somehow this was overlooked and there's a loss of revenue or a loss of access to the public they need to address that but that is not in within our jurisdiction right now to repair i don't think we're no if one's repairing we're illuminating it we're you are illuminating yes are you are, are. Again, we're, counting spaces, so <laughs> we're yeah. illuminating it and and taking it into consideration in our evaluation of well, the available parking. it does it does impact to the extent that it impacts the availability for parking for this project i think it's a fair consideration to the extent 
that somehow it could have a the best practice here or a better outcome would be if we captured the revenue for 48 overnight or found a new system to make that work better or to make it provided for the public somehow in the township's interest I think that's not that's not really before this board so you know that's all and I understand long, where you're coming from and how long are the 30 do we know how long the 30 are leased back to the developer from the town they're gonna have to tell us that clause so on either yeah. end then you read, read that contract <laughs> uh, yeah. I think as long as they keep paying us and we get we get paid monthly what did they use the 30 spots for is that something specific I, I don't does know. you know we don't know but I, I did doesn't matter it's a re if I were the governing body and I had a revenue stream I'd be happy with that because it offsets the 48 spaces that we're Ta not well, getting tax impact. <laughs> I don't know about the other. Yeah, I was just trying to understand when that may change, but it sounds like it's, it's not <coughs> well defined, if at all. So I think, you know, you're saying, you're suggesting that someone should take a look at it. Probably, yeah, but not, not necessarily the planning board. All right, Mr. Giosa, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Troutner, um, is that it for this evening? That's it for this evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, next meeting. February 10th. All right. We will see you then. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You waive the time in which the board has to act. We do. Of course you do. Thank you. <laughs> All right, do we have any other business that we need to address? We have bills to pay. And did we get a uh, comment from, from, from our CFO? <laughs> maybe a change. It was a change to the ledger, so it wasn't actually an, an issue with the bill. It was just an entry <laughs> in the ledger. So I have no questions and would move to approve the bills. Like I said, CFO. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See you next time. Okay. <laughs> Same back channel. <laughs> <laughs>